All right, guys, we are back with another um, book review. This is the third book review of 2022. Um, I'm just plowing through books right now because I'm still on break, so it's a little bit easier to get through um, books. And um, like I said, my goal is to get through the pile that is sitting next to my bed, which I'm in, in our bedroom right now. <laughs> but, um, but I'm trying to get through the pile next to the bed, plus um, a few extra books. Um, and by a few extra books, I mean, I have a lot of books that I really do want to read this year um, that are on my list. But then there's some books that I've just had sitting around um, or that were given to me um, over, you know, the last couple of years. And I just haven't read them. Um, and so I'm always about reading books um, that I haven't read yet. Um, so this one's a little bit different than some of the others. Um, like I ten, tend to, uh, for the most part, stick to um, a couple specific genres um, with fantasy and historical fiction, a um, little bit of the classics, um, you know, like Austin and such. Um, but um, today, completely different um, uh, switcheroo, and that is this book here. Um, can you see it? Yeah, we can see it. Um, it's called The Wild Card by um, Hope and Wade King. Um, and they are uh, educators um, at the Ron Clark Academy in Atlanta, um, which if you um, know nothing about the Ron Clark Academy, um, it is a premier school where a lot of, um, a lot of teachers um, have gone for uh, professional development just to kind of really focus on engaging students in the classroom um, and not so much focusing on you have this standardized test and the kids are behind because of whatever reasons um, it, they they really take it to the nth degree um, and um, it's a great school um, if you've ever heard Ron Clark speak um, he's a phenomenal speaker his um, just kind of energy is just really um, contagious. So um, anyway, Hope and Wade King, they work at the Ron Clark Academy. Um, and this whole book is um, about being creative in your classroom so that students are engaged. Um, and this was given to me at the beginning of the school year because um, our school um, kind of focus uh, in book studies and stuff this year have to do with Ron Clark and the Ron Clark story. Um, and um, so this was just kind of like a bonus book because these educators work at the Ron Clark Academy. Um, and so basically their whole um, philosophy is that um, it's better if you are a creative teacher um, and then how to be a creative teacher so that students are engaged in the classroom and whatever um, subject material that um, you are working on or that you're focusing on. And um, I read it. Um, kind of going in not really understanding like what the heck they were talking about um, because when I first looked at the title I'm like creative breakthrough not really sure where they're going with this um, and a lot of times um, the big the big misconception um, that they said um, but also that I, I think even myself that I had was thinking about creative in terms of like arts and crafts and stuff like that um, and while those things are helpful um, those manipulative pieces of education, those are great, but um, they're also just talking about like other ways that you can be creative. Um, so for example, um, Wade, um, he uh, talks about how his um, background is in music. Um, and so he brought in um, his uh, electric guitars and his amps and he writes songs and stuff for the kids to kind of dance to or sing along to so that they remember certain concepts whereas um his wife hope is just she's very like artsy craftsy um and so she'll like redo her entire classroom one day um and then leave it up for like three or four weeks um so there's like kind of different levels of what being creative means and they really talk about using what works for you um, and then expounding upon it um, which I think is really important to um, remember as educators um, that you know whatever works for you you can always build upon it um, and so like I know for me um, one of the best um, lessons one <laughs> the the lessons I always have a lot of success with is the fashion lesson mostly because the kids get to see the clothes and they get to dress up and stuff um and just um seeing me dress up in, in things that they don't typically see that always gets um my kids engaged um and so 
Um, I know that as a background and I'm not going to wear my costumes every single day um, at school. It's just a lot. <laughs> it's a lot and it gets hot. Um, but, um, you know, like knowing that, you know, and kind of expounding upon that, like, oh, I can take this and, and maybe do it once during a lesson. And so my new goal, new goal um, is trying to get a um, a costume for every time period that I teach. Um, and I'm very, very slowly working on that. I've only got three so far, <laughs> but you know, um, just having that thought process though, of like I can dress up, you know, and, and get kids engaged or, um, doing small things like they talked about, um, they wanted the kids to do, I think it was like a scavenger hunt or something where they were doing like a lot of research. And so she gave the kids, um, a bunch of those like cheapo headbands that you get, um, you know, out of the beauty section, um, and then put like one of those little push lights from the dollar store on it to give them like little headlamps so that they were using the headlamp to, and they could click it on and off, you know, like fun stuff like that. Um, and they are, um, they both, uh, are teaching at the lower elementary, um, or lower grade and well, not really, um, cause they switch schools midway through the book, they switch schools because they teach at the Ron Clark Academy, which is middle school, but they started out in elementary. So like some things were a little bit more elementary, um, geared, but they can still work in a middle school setting because, um, and as a middle school teacher, I know this middle schoolers are still kids. Um, and they still <laughs> will a lot of times do those weird, fun things, um, that you want to do. Um, and so this just kind of really kind of re-solidified that like some of my creative things that I do are good. Um, I think the pandemic has kind of shifted my own personal creative juices just because like, I don't want the kids up running around all that often. <laughs> um, because of COVID and half of my kids refuse to wear their mask and I already had one kid literally get the entire class, including myself sick this year. Um, so, um, I'm just kind of th thinking through it, um, as a, a pandemic educator. Um, but I, I think, um, a lot of what they had to say, um, was really useful and really good. Um, if I have a complaint about their book, um, it, some of it, I was just like, okay, that's great. Um, and they talk about like, oh, if you feel like you can't pay for it out of your own pocket, a lot of this stuff comes out of your own pocket. And I kept wondering, um, and I tried to read in the back, but it didn't really elaborate on like their own family and stuff, but it seems like they have a really big support system with their parents. And it also seems like they might not have their like kids. <laughs> um, so, uh, like their own personal kids. So I'm like that, kind of changes your budget a little bit. Um, and in, even though I don't have children myself, you know, I do still have a family and a pet, you know, so I think about those things. Um, and I, and I don't also want to be spending thousands of dollars, um, on my classroom every single year. Um, but even, um, as they said in the book, start small, you know, even small things that I can do with paper, or I can make myself, um, I definitely think I'm going to kind of go in that direction. Um, so, for this book, um, because it is, um, a book that is, you know, geared towards, um, educators, this is definitely an education specific book. Um, so if you're not in education, this is probably not a book for you. Um, but, um, I would give it a three out of five, um, simply because it sounds great. Um, and a lot of their stuff, like I am taking to heart, um, it's just, I felt like it was definitely written with more of this loftier, goal um and not fully taking into account that like everybody has their own stuff that they have to pay for and um making it a little bit um, more budget friendly I think would have been um, a little bit easier but um but it overall wasn't a bad book so um that is the third book review um for the year um hopefully next video i will not be wearing the exact same clothes that i've been wearing for the last two videos um uh for book four um which will be coming up um and i look forward to seeing um everybody back again um if you got questions about the book or if you read the book and you have ideas um or thoughts about the book drop them in the comments um and also if you have book suggestions um please drop those in the comments as well look forward to hearing um, about other people's, um, reading, um, and, and things that they think that I would enjoy. So see you next video.